Okay, so this is the second video on matters of life and death, and in this video we're going to be focusing on abortion. So we're going to be looking at the law on abortion, we're going to be having a look at um, non-religious reasons for and against abortion, we're going to be having a look at some key teachings which you can use as examples or reasons for and against abortion, um, we're going to have a look at Christian views for and against abortion, and Muslim views for and against abortion. Okay, so here is the law on abortion in the UK. So abortion is legal in the UK, um, but can only happen 24 weeks, up to 24 weeks into a pregnancy. So that's six months. So after that, um, it's, it's, it's too late then. Um, two doctors must agree that the abortion can go ahead um, and it must take place in a proper medical facility. Um, and in order for abortion to happen, it, two doctors must agree um, that one of the following criteria are fulfilled. So um, if the mother's life is in danger um, from having a child, um, then an abortion could happen. So, for example, if the mother had um, some kind of illness, which meant that if she were to give birth, um, she could die then that would class um, as grounds for a, an abortion. Um, if the mother's health, uh, mental health is at risk, so for example, if the mother had been raped um, and the, the birth of the child would constantly remind her of the trauma of that rape, um, then the doctors might agree that that would be grounds for an abortion. Um, if the health of existing children would be at risk, so for example, if um, the mother already had children and could not afford to have another child, then that would be um, grounds for an abortion as well. And um, finally, if the baby that was uh, when born um, would be severely disabled, um, then that would also be grounds for an abortion um, as well. So here is a table just showing pro-choice, so arguments in favour of allowing abortion, and pro-life arguments against abortion, um, just different views on, on the topic of abortion. Abortion is a controversial topic, um, and there are still plenty of countries in the world where abortion is not legal, and in the UK there are groups um, against abortion, despite the fact that it is legal, um, and there are lots of reasons for people give for and against abortion. So looking at the pro-choice arguments first, um, obviously if the woman's life is at risk, lots of people would say that that would be grounds for an abortion because um, surely it is better for the woman to have an abortion than to die from having a child. Um, there are lots of grounds to suggest that perhaps um, it would not be fair either on the mother or the baby for the, 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 the mother to actually have the child. So, um, for example, it could be that it's a teen pregnancy and that the, the mother would be too young, still at school, hasn't got qualifications. If they were to have a child, that would mean they would not be able to finish school um, and um, wouldn't be able to bring up the child and, and so on because they wouldn't be able to afford it, things like that. Um, like, like, as we mentioned before, it could have been the result of a rape, the pregnancy, and some people would say that that should be grounds for an abortion and that the child could have a poor quality of life. So, so remember that this is one of your keywords for this topic. So quality of life, the idea that life must have some benefits for it to be worth living. So lots of people would argue that if um, the baby was to be severely disabled um, and was going to ha have a... Um, a real struggle in life that they would have a poor quality of life and therefore it would be better to have an abortion before it got to that stage. Um, on the other side of things, the pro-life arguments, pro-life is the idea that it's for life, so against abortion, um, and pro-life arguments might go along the lines of saying things like abortion is murder, it's taking a life, lots of religions teach that abortion is not allowed so it shouldn't be allowed. Um, pro-life um, argue, arguments also talk about how um, once an abortion has happened you can't really go back and you might feel really guilty um, lots of pro-life argument also goes along the lines of the idea that the fetus has no voice of its own so because it can't 
say anything does not mean that we should take advantage of that and really a fetus is is a vun is quite vulnerable and we should look after the fetus rather than than end its life um and so because it has no voice does not mean that it doesn't have any rights and doesn't need looking after and protecting and pro life people would also say that adoption is a better option and that rather than having an abortion uh, the mother should have the baby and if she can't look after the the child for for whatever reason she could put it up for an adoption which is where somebody else would look after the the baby um whilst it grows up um and be its adopted parent okay so we're going to come on to religious arguments for and against abortion now and what i've just done for you here is given you some key teachings and these really are key teachings which run throughout the topic of abortion and also euthanasia, which we've got another video on. Um, and these are teachings which you can use in your reasons and examples um, for abortion, really for any questions on abortion. So we'll just have a quick run through these. Um, a big one is to do with the sanctity of life, which again is another of your keywords for this topic. And the sanctity of life is the idea that life is holy and belongs to God. And what that means is because life it belongs to God, only God can decide when life begins and ends, which obviously would be an anti-abortion teaching. Um, another teaching which is in the Bible is that humans were made in the image of God. Um, and if we are made in the image of God, that means we are valuable. Human beings are valuable. All human life is valuable. Um, and so that, again, is anti-abortion because if human life is valuable but yet you're taking that away then that's kind of going against the idea that it's valuable jesus taught to love thy neighbor now this could be used for or against abortion you could say that sometimes abortion could be loving for example if the baby was going to be severely disabled um or it could be used against abortion so for example um you could say well it's not very loving to end the life of the fetus um or the baby and in fact um so therefore it means that abortion is always wrong uh, one of the ten commandments is do not kill again would be against abortion life begins at conception so conception is when the sperm meets the egg and the egg is fertilized and some christians believe that from that very moment there is a life and so if it's alive then that means that um, any abortion would be murder so christians and, and some muslims would believe that um, muslims believe that the soul does not enter the body of the fetus um, until 120 days after conception so until then it's not a human being so at 120 days some Muslims believe that that is when the soul is put into the fetus and it's the soul which makes the fetus a human being and so if it doesn't have a soul before then as long as the abortion happens before then it's okay because it's not murder because it's not a human being before then now, another key teaching which you could use in abortion or euthanasia is this idea of the lesser of two evils. So just to summarise, the lesser of two evils is really where you have two options available um, and both of them are, are quite undesirable options. Neither of them are, are particularly great options, but one is a lot worse than the other. Um, and so whilst they're both evils, one is less evil than the other. So... To put that in context, in the context of abortion, um, abortion. Lots of people say abortion is bad. Even people who are pro-choice would say it's not a particularly desirable thing to have an abortion. It is the ending of a potential life. It potentially puts um, pressure and strain and distress on the mother who's going to have the abortion and so on. And so it's it's not a, a great thing. It's an unde it's, it's a it's, it's quite an undesirable thing. Um, but in some circumstances. Allowing a pregnancy to continue would be worse than the abortion. So, for example, if the mother's life was at risk from the pregnancy, so, for example, if she had an illness, which if she continued being pregnant would mean that it put her life at risk and she, sh she could die, lots of people would say, surely it is better to end the pregnancy, so end the life of the fetus, than it is... Um, to for her to carry on being pregnant, for her to die, and then for the fetus to die anyway because she's died. So surely it's better to end one life, i.e. the fetus, than for two lives to be ended, i.e. the mother and the fetus. So in this scenario here, 
Um, yes, the abortion is not desirable, it is an evil, but so too would would the the mother carrying on being pregnant and her dying, that would also be an evil. And lots of people would say that surely the abortion is the lesser of those two evils, it's the, the less bad of the two bad options, because the abortion would result in one life ending, but the alternative, i.e. not having an abortion, would result in two lives ending. Um, another example of abortion being the lesser of two evils would be, um, let's say, for example, that the mother had been raped. Um, so, um, yes, her having an abortion is undesirable, it is an evil, but so too would forcing her to have a baby that would constantly remind her of being raped. That would also be an evil. And lots of people would say um, that the, the abortion there is the lesser of those two evils because surely it, w it is less bad to end the pregnancy than it would be for her to have the baby and be constantly reminded of being raped. Okay, so let's see how we can put some of those teachings um, into practice here looking at Christian views on abortion. So the left-hand column here is Christian views allowing abortion. So some Christians might allow abortion, um, quoting love thy neighbour, saying that abortion may be the more loving thing to do. So for example, um, if the baby was going to be severely disabled, severely handicapped, it will be more loving to um, have an abortion. Um, We've, like we've just said, it could be the lesser of two evils. So, for example, um, if the mother had been raped, it would be less bad to have an abortion than it would be to make her have a baby that would constantly remind her of being raped. And some Christians don't believe that life begins at conception. Um, and some, some Christians might believe that life begins at birth or life begins at 24 weeks. And so as long as, as, long as the abortion happens before then, um, given certain grounds... Um, then it's okay. Um, there are also, however, lots of Christian views against abortion. So the sanctity of life, which we talked about before, that life is holy and belongs to God, so only God can decide when life should be ended, um, and so abortion will be wrong because only God can decide when life should be ended. Um, the Ten Commandments say do not kill, abortion is killing, therefore abortion is wrong. Um, human beings are made in the image of God and so are valuable, and so if you end that life, you go against the idea that life is valuable uh, because if life was valuable, you shouldn't end it. And again, love thy neighbour could be used as an argument against abortion because you could argue, well, actually, abortion is not very loving and what would be more loving is putting the baby up for adoption or um, caring for it if it was going to be ill um, and so on. OK, so coming now on to Muslim views um, on abortion. So left-hand column again. Uh, Muslim views allowing abortion. Now, something that's slightly different in Islam to Christianity is that uh, many Christians, uh, sorry, many Muslims believe that an abortion is okay up until 120 days after conception, because at 120 days, that is when the soul is put into the fetus, and so that's when it becomes a human being, because the soul makes it a human being. So as long as the abortion happens before 120 days, it's okay because it's not a human being and so therefore would not be seen as, a, as killing a human life. Um, some Muslims would also say that abortion could be the lesser of two evils, again, because of rape or something like that. Um, but again, coming on to Muslim views against abortion, very similar, again, to Christian views against abortion. Could talk about the sanctity of life. Do not kill is also mentioned in the Quran. And um, some Muslims believe that life begins at conception, so not after 120 days, but actually at conception. And if they believe that, then they would say that um, abortion would be murder and therefore wrong. So here I've just put together three exam style questions for you on the topic of abortion. So B question here asking for your opinion. Do you think abortion is acceptable? C um, asking you to explain why Christians, some Christians allow abortion and some do not. If you get a question like that, which asks you to say why some Christians or, um, or in fact, it could ask you about um, one religion other than Christianity, Christianity, which you talk about Islam, could ask you why some of followers of those religions do and, and some followers do not believe in certain things. Make sure that you divide up your answer um, to address both do and do not. 
So remember, with the C question, we're looking for three reasons um, in response to the question. So if it was asking you why some do and some do not believe in something, you'd, you'd maybe do one to say why they do and two why they do not or vice versa. Um, and then your D question there, no religious person should have an abortion. In your answer, refer to one religion other than Christianity. So remember, whenever you see that, it could be in a C question or a D question, um, make sure, if it says refer to one religion other than Christianity, that you talk specifically about Islam. So what I'd like you to do now is to pause the video, have a go at answering these questions, and then I've put together an answer um, for one of the questions, which we can have a look at afterwards. So I've had a go here at answering the D question. So remember, the first thing that you need to do when you see a quote um, in a D question is think to yourself, what would a religious person do? Are they going to agree or are they going to disagree with the quote? Um, and so for this one, no religious person should have an abortion. Um, I think actually um, some religious people would probably disagree with that quote. So I'm going to agree with the quote in part I and then I'm going to give reasons why Muslims would disagree with me in part I, I. So I've said um, that no religious person should have an abortion because of the sanctity of life. For example, religious people believe that life is holy and belongs to God, so only God can decide when life ends, so abortion is wrong because abortion is ending a life. Uh, and then I've talked about how the Bible says do not kill. What I've then done is I've then said why a Muslim would disagree with me, so why they would actually say um, that a religious person could have an abortion. Um, and I've talked about how Muslims, some Muslims don't believe that life begins until after 120 days after conception, and so as long as it's before, then it's okay. And then I've talked about how abortion could be the lesser of two evils, and so so be okay. So just remember, the most important thing when you're answering a D question is that you think to yourself, what would a religious person do? And then you do the opposite in part I, and then say why the re a religious person would disagree with you in part I, I. What you'll also notice in my answer as well is if a quote says something like no religious person should have an abortion, you don't need to give specific reasons why a religious person should or shouldn't have an abortion. Because if you look at my answer, my answer could equally apply to if the, if the quote was no person should have an abortion. It doesn't really matter that the quote says religious or not. So in your answer, you don't have to give specifically um, specific reasons why just religious people should or shouldn't have abortions. Really what the question is asking is, should people be allowed abortions or not? Give reasons why you might agree and give reasons why you might disagree. So don't worry too much if a question asks you um, about a religious person um, in the quote. You don't need to give an answer specific to just religious people.